Alright, this video is going to be about uh, converting a fluorescent aquarium light to make it work with LED. Um, pretty much I'm getting in, into the hobby again after about 20 years out of it. And um, yeah, I mean, none of the bulbs work. Could be the starter. But honestly, like, when my main show tank that I set up for my kid, I got an LED light and I was like, hey, why can't I just convert? my old fluorescent ones to uh, LED. So I'm gonna do that, <clears throat> show you how to do it. Things you're gonna need. You're gonna need an LED driver. Uh, this is, I bought this on eBay, really cheap. I think it was like $6 and change or something like that. And this converts your 120 volts in America to 12 volts for your LEDs. Uh, for LEDs, I bought these waterproof LED strips. I have a positive and a negative on the end. I bought one white, that's white. And I bought blue. Uh, this is blue right here. Uh, pretty much, if you see my tank right here, it's nighttime. I like the blue light. So I bought white and blue, because that's why I run during the day on that one. And uh, yeah, it just makes it look good. And with Glowfish, which I have, because again, I have a 50, uh, 60 month old who likes fishes. Glowfish do really good in the blue light, reflects everything, so. But, all right, <clears throat> so you got your LEDs. You got LED driver, convert 120 volts to 12 volts. You're gonna need some, well, wire strippers, which strip the uh, wire so you can make the connections better. You'll probably need one or two of these uh, wire connectors, so that we can connect wires. <clears throat> And uh, yeah, pretty much a screwdriver to unscrew screws. And uh, yeah, so here we go. I'm gonna show you how to do it. First thing you wanna do is take the bulb out. You won't be needing that anymore. And you'll be using a lot less power. Okay, the next thing that we wanna do is we wanna loosen up the screws to take this white little plastic cut off. These screws can stay over here. They're holding the ballast in. And honestly, if you want, you could take the, uh, oh, you could take the uh, starter out already. Actually, not, we're gonna need that with LED. Um, twist it out, pull it out. It'll sit there. Uh, and let's take off the hood. I'm gonna loosen up these four screws. One, two, three, four. Okay, take the four screws out. And you just lift this white piece out comes right out. Just be careful because there's wires on the other side, like that, that connect to the switch and stuff, and you don't want to break any wires right now. However, we will be cutting into them. Um, these little white side things with the bulb connected, you can actually push those in, and they come right out, so you can take the white hood out better. Just push them in. The white piece will come out better. And it'll expose all the wiring and stuff. And the first thing we want to do is we want to cut this wire, which is coming out of the switch right here. It's coming out of the switch and into the ending for here. We're going to cut it right about here. So that way, if you ever do want to go back to fluorescent, you still could. You just have to basically connect those with a wire connector. So I'm going to take my wire cutters, which I forgot. You're going to need a pair of wire cutters. And I'm just going to cut it right there. Just snip it because you're not going to need these. Okay. Now this is still connected to the starter area, which you don't really have to care about. And we have to get the ballast out. To get the ballast out, you got to take these two screws out and it'll come right out. So I'm going to do that next. I'm going to unscrew these two screws and take the ballast out. Okay. And I took the uh, two screws out from this side. And the ballast comes right out. It's pretty old. Remember, this light's like 20-something years old. And you notice that the ballast is connected to the power, the wire that plugs into the wall. That's this thing. It's a long wire. So it actually connects in there to the wire. So you just follow that along the wire. It goes into the hood. Okay? And then you have these little wire connectors right here. We're going to leave the one that we snipped already over here. And we're gonna leave this one connected that's coming from the wire 
into the switch. We're gonna leave that alone. This one that connects the ballast right here, so you follow it to the ballast. You can actually unscrew that after you see. And then just take this out. Basically take that off so the ballast is off. I'm probably gonna have to take the pants here. So I'm gonna loosen this up and get that off the ballast. Basically just connect these two wires. So I took the uh, wire connector off this one, which is not connected to the switch. It's connected to the ballast. So the ballast is loose. And honestly, this starter, you can just pinch the sides here, that side, and that side, and it'll come right off. And that will get rid of your ballast and all the fluorescent connectors. As I said, this is the ballast all unhooked just by doing those two wires. And uh, keep it. If you ever want to go back to fluorescent, you can. Okay. So now you have this wire coming from the power cable, plugs into the wall. This goes from the power cable, but plugs into the switch that you turn on. And our next step is to take the white covering, which is now loose, and you're going to mount your LED driver. These are actually small enough to go in the same place that the uh, ballast did. However, the uh, screw holes don't really line up. So I'll be honest with you, just for now, because I'm gonna get lazy, I'm just gonna kind of tape it there with tape really, really well, so it doesn't move around. But honestly, you could take uh, screws and screw them in on the side from the other side if you have the patience to do that. One very important thing I almost forgot, you want the uh, output, actually says output there. You want the output to go towards the side with the holes closest. So it'll be like that because this is gonna connect to your LEDs and we're gonna go right through this hole to mount them on the other side of this. Uh, these wires are eventually gonna to connect to your power switch and I'll tell you which one is connect to which, but again, I have to mount the LED driver first. Okay, next step is to hook up the input power, which is on this side. And you have a line, which is the live wire and you have the neutral. So we're gonna do that next. Okay, so the first step is, uh, again, you have two wires coming in from the uh, plug of, that you plug into the wall. You have an always live wire, which is gonna go into the live side of the LED driver. And then you have this one that's hooked up to the switch that you turn on. That's gonna be the neutral. But we're gonna have to strip the wire here so we have some of the wire, uh, bare wire coming out. So I'm gonna use that wire strippers pretty much what you do if you just put it right at the tip where you want it I have it on the smallest gauge 14 and you close it right around the wire but not all the way through to cut it and you just pull up and it should take strip some of this insulation off as you can see now I stripped some of the insulation so I have some bare wire to connect and again this is coming from the switch so I'm going to connect the wire from the switch to the neutral, which is the end, the blue one here. We want to make sure it says neutral of some sort. I'm going to connect those together with a wire connector. And if you've never done that before, basically you hold these two wires together with the uh, bare connectors together. And then you're going to stick one of these on there. The uh, small orange ones, the ones I'm going to use, that's the smallest they have. You basically put that all the way on the wire and then you turn it till it locks in and you tug on the two wires just to make sure they're together and that will keep the wires together. Okay, I have the neutral wire, which is the blue wire, marked with N. And I have that connected together with the wire that's coming out of the switch on the back. And the next one is to take the live wire, which is marked L. And I'm gonna kind of connect it to the line that had the ballast on it with the same screw connector that came with it. And uh, that should be it for connecting the uh, power. And then we'll deal with the LEDs. So again, connect the what used to be the ballast wire with the live wire coming out of your LED driver. All right, our next step is not to put the LEDs through that hole yet, because honestly, it's easier to wire over here. But if you see this, this has a little bit of yellow in it. That is my white light. And the one that's silver colored is the blue light. And you're basically just gonna hook up which is output of the LED driver. Red is positive, and you'll see that they have a plus sign. And that's gonna hook up with all the red wires in all of your LED strips. And the negative is black, and that's gonna hook up to all the uh, black wires on your LED strips. 
We're gonna do that right now. So each LED strip, this is one of them, has a red for positive and a black for negative. And this one has a red for positive and black for negative. Basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna take all the black wires all together, line them up, and then put a wire connector on it. So I'm gonna do all the negative ones first. I'm gonna do all the black ones together and I'll show you what it looks like when you're done. And all the black wires, there's so one there, there's so one here, it's coming out of the LEDs and the main black wire coming out of here are all connected together in one wire. And if you're seeing a little bit of red, that's only because I had, a, I had it right, right near a red wire. So it just, but it'll have a black on it. You can't miss it. And you tie those all together. And I'm gonna do the same thing with the red ones. So I'm gonna need another wire connector. I'm gonna connect all the red wires together, which are the positive ones, okay? So I'm gonna connect all the red wires together just like we do with the black. The reason why we haven't unstuck the uh, stickiness is because we haven't put it in the right place for the LEDs, but they come self-adhesive. Self and uh, we're just gonna test to make sure that the LEDs light up. Because if they don't light up, there's something wrong. And both of them should light up because again, we connect them to the outputs, red with red, black with black. Your live wire is connected to the brown that came from the ballast. And then the blue one, which is your neutral, is connected to the switch wire. So we're gonna go plug it in and just try it and see what happens first. So I got my LEDs, just testing them. They're all connected. I'm gonna plug in the wire and I'm gonna hit the switch and hopefully it'll light up. And it does. So we are all set. We did all the connections correctly. The LEDs are working. I got the blue one here and I got the white one here. And now, I'm gonna just gonna put this all together. Okay, so again, not taking the self-adhesive off. I'm gonna do that for another day. I'm gonna save it for another day. I mean, uh, just put them through the hole on the side where the uh, fluorescent connector used to be. And again, that's why you want the output to go here so that you have room to put the LEDs through in the hole. Put so this over carefully. And just pull them right through. Be careful not to catch them on anything. Okay. And I don't mind if a little bit of red wire is going through right now because I have to mount it to the underside of the lights. So pretty much, sorry about the camera. I'm going to mount one here on this side. They also overlap a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about that because honestly it's just extra lights. But you can trim the LEDs. You see that little copper connector there has a little scissor icon don't know if you can see that if you cut it right there you can actually trim to length but uh i'm just gonna keep the extra length i paid for the lds i can still fit it in there so double stick it over there and double stick the other one in. right against there and the yellow one again is the white and the silverish one is the blue so actually, I, I might rotate that around. I might put the uh, white one over here and the blue one over there. Blue in the back more. I mean, I don't think it really makes a difference, but uh, you know, at least this way, you have an opportunity to plan what you want. All right? So I'm gonna take some double-sided sticky tape and take these down in the right place. And you know, eventually I'll get to the self-adhesive part where you rip it all off and it stays there forever. But one thing to mention, you might wanna put the white thing back with the uh, screw holes lined. So that way you can see how this is all going to fit. Just be careful that underneath where you're going to screw this back in, that you don't have any cables or anything like that. Let's see, there's cables over here, which is fine. We don't want any cables on the screw holes where you're going to put the screws back in after. And again, I'm just going to take some double sided tape, tape this down, and then later on, eventually peel off the adhesive and put it on the actual light forever. Other thing to know is that when you're lining these up, you know, and I'm doing these very quick tonight. But uh, you want to line them up so that they're the same length and you have the connectors and the lights in the same place because it just makes it nice and neat. I'm going to have some extra length there, but I'm just going to leave it for tonight. So it looks like this. Uh, sorry, it's a little blurry. It looks like this. I'm just going to tape it down a little bit more so it stays there temporarily until I uh, take off the double-sided permanent adhesive tape. But uh, at least this way you can get an idea. And it's actually better, I think, to plan it out with tape and taping it down so you can see how it works before you uh, commit to taking the adhesive tape off. So uh, other things I was thinking of is that if you want to add another light, you probably could in the middle there. 
Again, you just have to connect the red with the red and the black with the black to the output. But um, I basically put one of these together really fast before this one, just to make sure I got all the directions right. And uh, yeah, two, two light up a 10 gallon, no problem, basically. So the next step that I'm gonna do after I have it, basically if you have the adhesive, you put it down and make sure it's sticking permanently. But I'm just gonna put the screws back in, four screws from before. And that should do it for the hood. Uh, if you ever wanted to put something over this hole, I'm sure you get like a piece of cardboard or something if you're worried about water. But uh, I'm using the old covers still to the tanks that have a glass protective thing, so I'm not really worried. And again, these LEDs are waterproof. They have like a vinyl covering to them. So nothing is exposed for water. And I do recommend getting the waterproof LEDs because you never know. You never know if it's going to be dipped in the water or you got water on it. All right, this is the first product before we try it on a tank. Um, probably going to put it on a 15-gallon high with tons of baby guppies in it. Okay, I got it plugged in. It's this wire right here. I'm going to follow it up right to the light on a normal uh, tank cover. This is what the tank looks like without no light. And that's what it looks like with it. So, as you can see, two strips will do it perfectly fine. And I also have the other one that I put on down there. Sorry if this is blurry. And that's it. That's the tanks in all their glory. Uh, two LED lights. Two LED strips. Has a little bit of blue. A little bit of white. Um, future things I have... Uh, wants to do on these things pretty much I have two 12 volt timers coming in so I'm gonna try making it so that you can have the blue programmed at a separate time than the white and that way it can be like the tank that I showed earlier um, you have the white and blue stay on during the the daytime hours that you'd like to set for your tank and then uh, just have the blue at night and have that on a separate timer so I'm gonna see how that goes and uh, I'll try to make another video of that the last part of my review, um, just to let you know that it pulls 13 watts for those two LED things. But uh, like I said, I'm going to try to do the timer. And then what that will do is it will uh, make just the blue ones go on. And uh, I'm just going to guess that that's going to be six and a half watts. Because obviously I have two strips and it's pulling 13 watts right now. Um, so energy saving kind of but you, I don't know if you can see this on camera it does have a slight shimmery effect on the uh, gravel just want to rig a power filter up there and I have a net to block the whole oh, hit uh, fish little guppies but uh I don't know if you can see that but there is shimmering going on which is what's also awesome about LEDs so